I'm here today to walk you through the tutorial, the demo, um, in terms of how to create a click game where you want to see how many times you can click the sprite at a set amount of time to see who can score the most amount of points. And this is just a really good project to do where we're trying to think about variables, the timer, um, score and just those types of elements. This is a great little project to kind of get exposed to that and manipulation of the sprites and things like that. So what we're going to do in your scratch is we're going to go here to a new project. Now there are tons of these different games in the scratch. If you search for them online, there's tons of them in the scratch library tutorials on YouTube. So this is not something that I generated on my own, uh, but something that I use time and time again with, with educators and students to kind of help make this work. So let's go ahead and dive into this. And I'm going to create um, a theme. I'm going to call it the Jungle Click Game. Um, you can name your game whatever you want. I'm going to do a jungle and just kind of mix it up to a different theme this time. And so what we want to do in our sprite, the very first thing that we need to have happen here is we want to go down here and we're going to actually get rid of this cat because we don't need the cat. And we're going to drop down here to backdrop uh, this icon down here and we're going to choose search and we're going to choose one. So once I'm in the backdrop, I can scroll through here. I got my categories up top, or I can just kind of filter through um, alphabetically. And you can pick anyone you want. You can pick your theme, doesn't matter. And I'm just going to pick jungle here. So we got this jungle backdrop. And what we want to do next is we want to add a sprite. This is going to be the character that we're going to be clicking on to score points in the game. And when we're in here with the sprite, we can hover over these and we can see the different animations that they provide if there is one. So you can go through, there are a lot of different creatures in here and icons and symbols. I'm going to choose uh, the bat just because I really like this icon here um, as my sprite. And this is what we're going to click in order to be able to score our points here. So now that we've got our bat, we see that we have them selected down here. This is all highlighted in blue. And the first thing we need to do is code our bat. And so I'm going to drop over here to events in our coding panel. And I'm just going to use the green arrow. Um, in future tutorials, we can manipulate this into other objects and signal commands but for now we're just going to stick with the green arrow and what we're going to do is we're going to switch the costume of our sprite and the reason that we're going to do this is we want it as it moves around just to look different and so we're going to click this switch costume now you can see here that if I do this drop down, I got A, B, C, and D. We got four different ones, and we want it to pick randomly um, between those four. So we're going to drop over here to operators, and in operators, we're going to slide over this pick random. And you can see that the pick random is one to ten. But earlier when we had this, we can see when we drop down, we've got four choices right here. So we're actually going to go and toss this guy up here, and we're going to make this one to four. And we're also going to shrink this guy a little bit because he's pretty big on the screen. It's actually going to make it way too easy. So we're going to set the size. And you can make this. Let's start 75. Uh, I might make him a little bit smaller as time goes on just to make the challenging, uh, the game a little bit more challenging. But we'll start with 75. And the other thing we want to do just to kind of keep it um, random so it's not always just facing this direction is... We want to have him where he's facing different angles and looking different ways just to increase the complexity of the game. So we're going to go to motion here and we're going to drag in this point in direction. And just like we did for the costumes, we're going to go back to operators here now and we're going to pick random. And we can adjust these numbers however we want, but this is going to move him from uh, negative 90 to 90 on the screen. We can You can change and dial these, in these numbers more as we kind of go through here um, to see what angles that you like. And then the last part, once we have this, changing the costume, we're going to shrink this guy down a little bit, and we got him pointing in random directions. Um, once that happens, we want him to go to just a random position on the screen somewhere in here. Now, if we run it like this, and I hit this green arrow, it's only going to do it one time. 
so I can see that he's upside down. Now he's over here kind of hibernating. Um, we got this kind of movement pattern happening. But we want this to be going on all the time. So we're going to enter a forever block in here. And what I like about this is I can just squeeze this in right here and it kind of covers all of it. Now, this is going to go so fast that we're not going to be able to see it. So if you look here, it's just it's crazy. So we want to slow him down a little bit. And the way we do that is we add a weight block. So this weight block here, we can make it one second. Um, you can make it you know, point you you can adjust the time, and this also changes the complexity of the game because he's going to be moving quicker and quicker on the screen the less the weight block is. So now that we have that, we can see that he's flapping all over the place. Um, you know, and I might make this actually. Let's see, let's just make this 80 to 80. I don't like that he's completely upside down on some of these, so I'm going to stop here and get him going. Okay. So we'll play with that a little bit later. So now that we have that, we want to get to the point now where we want to start to keep track of score. And so this is going to introduce our variables. So we're going to drop over here to variables now. And we're actually going to click make variable. We can see we already have some preset blocks that are programmed for this one just labeled my variable. But we actually want to make this labeled the way we want. So this new variable name, we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to call this score. And we can just leave this right now for all sprites and we don't need to put it on the cloud at this point for this tutorial, but in the future we could. And we're going to add that. And you're going to notice that he, the score is right here in the top left. We have this checked. Now if I uncheck this, it disappears. So if you don't want this to be displayed, you can always hide it. So now that we have that, we want to write some code for this variable. So now what we want to do is we want to bring over another event block and we're going to bring over when clicked right here. And now that we have that, the first thing that we want to do is we want to set the score to zero. So every time we click the green arrow, we want the score to reset back to zero for the next game. So we're going to drag this set my variable to zero, but we need to knock this drop down venue down to score because this is the variable that we're keeping track of up here in the top left screen. So the more variables you have, the more options you're going to have down here. And then once we have that, we then want to go through and be able to keep track of score when things happen. So we're just going to bring these in already. Since we've messed with forever already, we're going to do the same kind of setup, a forever block, and then a if-then block. And we're going to dive into this here in a little bit here next in this next part. So what we want to do is we want to have it that when I click the bat with my mouse pointer, when I click on them, we want the score to go up by one every time we do that. So if you think about it, we're really looking for two things to happen. We need our mouse pointer to be touching the bat, and we also need the mouse to be clicked. So we don't want it that if I just hover my mouse pointer over the bat, it gives us a point. We only want it to give us a point when it's over and we click. So we're going to go over to our operators, and we're going to add the AND block. We could do OR, and this can make it easy that if I just hover, or if I do something else, we could score, but we don't want that. So we're going to slide this AND block in right here. And so now the first thing is, if, if our mouse pointer is touching, so we got to make sure this little triangle inside here, not triangle, um, shape right here is highlighted. If it's touching the mouse pointer, and if the mouse is down, so this mouse down represents a mouse click on our on our keypad here. So if it's touching and the mouse is down, then what do we want it to do? This is something that we need to think about here. So now we want to change our score by one. So we're going to go back to variables here. We're going to change score by one. 
And the other thing we need to do in this part here is we need to add another weight block, so under control. And the reason we're going to do this, we're just going to make this, uh, let's just make it 0.5, is we want to have a bit of a delay. Otherwise, if we don't put this in here, when I click, if I hold the mouse down, I could actually get two, three, four, or five points um, the longer my mouse is actually engaged on the bat because this loop right here will happen so fast. So this wait block, by the time we wait a half second, by the time we click and wait a half second, we have this 0.75, it's gonna be moving to another location. So now when we run this, let's see if this actually gives us a point here. There we go, there's one. I mean, you gotta be quick. I mean, I'm not very fast, am I? Whew, I'm not very quick. Let's make this uh, one here, just so you can, for the sake of the demo, I'll work on my re reaction skills here a little bit better. There we go. There we go, so you can see the score going up there. Goodness, I'm not very good at this game. But you get the point there now. So you can go ahead and run that and test that yourself before you move on to make sure that that's actually giving you points. So now that we've got that, now we want to be able to make it competitive in the sense that we can put a countdown timer into this game where we want to see how many clicks we get, say, in 10 seconds or 15 seconds or 30 seconds, whatever it is that you want to give. Um, so that way people can play and you can see who's going to have the high score. So what we're going to do for this next part is we are going to go to variables again and we're going to make a new variable and what we're going to do is I'm going to call this timer just like we did before, keep everything the same. And now what I want to do is under events, I'm going to bring this when the green arrow is clicked again just like we've been doing. We're going to, almost similar to this, we're going to set the timer, but this time we want to do a, a countdown timer. So we're actually going to reset this to 15. If you wanted this to go up, you would start it at zero and do the opposite of what we're about to do. But I want it to start at 15 and count down to the point of zero, knowing that the game is over to kind of create that tension. And then we're going to add a repeat block in here. Now this repeat block, this number here, needs to be the same as this. So I'm going to repeat this 15 times. And then I'm going to add a weight block as well. Now what we want to do in here is we need to reduce it. So what's happening is we're going to set the timer to 15 once we click this green arrow. And 15 times it's going to wait a second. And then we want the, score, the timer to go down. So we're going to change the timer by a negative 1. So there is our timer. It's going to start at 15. It's going to wait one second. There's our official time. And it's going to go down by negative 1. And do this 15 times. So if we click this arrow, let's just see if the timer actually does it. There we go. You can see it counting down right down here. And we're good to go. And it's counting down. And we're in great shape. Now the last thing we want to have happen here, we need one more special block. You can see that, see how the game's still going on when the timer is set to zero? We actually want everything to end. So when it gets to zero, we want this to be completely done. So we're going to drag this under control, this stop, and we're going to choose all. This is going to stop everything going on in the program. So when this reaches zero, this bat's going to stop moving the score, everything. And this, my friends, is how we create a little click game um, as we go through. So I can click here and try to get this guy, see how many points I can get. And then you're going to be able to see that he will eventually, once we get to z zero here, everything stops. See, I can't get any more points, and it's over. So a couple things that we could do with this. Um, we can create a lot of new variables, which I will put into the next video.
We could add music. We could add another sprite that actually takes points away if we click it on accident. Kind of like when you play Fruit Ninja and the cannonballs appear and things like that. But this is our basic click game. And in the next episode, I will show you some other features for you to consider. I hope you enjoyed. hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, leave a comment, get a hold of me, and we'll make it happen. And as always, stay awesome.